AR. Yeah. Yes, very good. So amplitude of the transmitted light will be AT. AT. Okay. So amplitude of the incident light is A. So amplitude of the reflected light is AR. And amplitude of the transmitted light is AT. When light is incident from medium one. Now what we are doing, as I was telling you, to apply the principle of uh, reversibility, we will send will incident a light with amplitude AT along EC with the same angle theta. So you understand that this light ray will be divided into two part. One part will be reflected back in the same medium. And another part will be transmitted into the medium one with the angle I. So, so what will be the, you know, amplitude of the light which is uh, refracted due to this? So incident amplitude is AT. So what will be the amplitude of the transmitted light? CB. Anyone please? Amplitude of the incident the light is AT. Does. Yes. The ATT days. ATT days, very good. It will be ATT days. Yes. So, and 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 we do one thing that we incident another light ray AR along DC. So this will also be divided into two part. One part will be reflected in the same medium with amplitude. AR is the incident amplitude. What will be the amplitude of the wave which is reflected along CV? AR into R? AR at this. Yeah. No, we are incidenting from the medium one. Dust is the situation when the light is incident from medium two. Please remember this. Okay. The amplitude coefficient is R dash when the light is incident from medium two. But when the light is incident from medium one, it is R. So in this case, light is incident from medium one. So it will be AR into R. So the amplitude of the light total which will come along CB due to both will be ARR plus ATT dash. So that is equation 18A. Is it okay? And it has to be equal to A that was the initial, initially incident. That has to be equal like on the principle of reversibility. But here we get another light ray that is AT has been reflected with AT into R dash. The amplitude of the reflected light due to the incident light AT will be AT into R dash. And this light ray will be refracted a part of this that will be AR into T. So the amplitude of the light which is coming along this direction is AR T plus AT R dash. And this must be zero because initially there are no light in this direction. Then how we can get a light ray in this direction? So according to principle of reversibility, these two equations must be true. Is it fine or any doubt with anyone? If any doubt, you can please tell me and let it clear. Anyone has any doubt or it is fine? Fine, sir. Okay, then let me. Fine, sir. Yeah, thank you. Fine, sir. So, yeah. So. From equation 18b, we get that AT into R plus R dash is zero. Now, since A and T are not equal to zero, so R plus R dash must be zero. So R dash is equal to minus R. So we get equation that is R dash is equal to R minus R. Now you know that we can write this as R to the power I pi. E to the power I theta, there is Euler's formula, is cos theta plus minus I sine theta. We have studied in mathematics. E to the power I theta, where I is you know, square root of minus one, imaginary. Uh, so it, it, it to the power i pi is cos pi and sine pi is zero. So cos pi is minus one. So we can write minus as a to the power i pi. So r dash is equal to r to the power i pi. So this means a difference of phase pi between the wave coming from internal and external reflection. You see, we can say that when the light is incident from the medium one, it is internally reflected. Whereas when the light is incident from medium two, it is externally reflected. That is R dash is the, the amplitude coefficient. So there is a phase difference of pi when the waves are coming from internal and external reflection. And in the lower single mirror experiment, it was found that an average phase change of pi occurs in the light wave at reflections in the rarer medium. That is 
from a surface back by the Denson media. So we got the same similar conclusion. And from equation 18a, we find that a into tt dash plus r square is equal to a, that is tt dash plus r square is equal to 1, or we can write tt dash as capital T and r square as capital R, that is reflection intensity uh, transmission coefficient and reflection coefficient. So T is equal to 1 minus R. So whatever light is incident, if there is no absorption, then and part of the light will be ref reflected and another part will be transmitted. So this is well known, we know. So from the Stokes statement, that's the important conclusion we got basically this, that there is a phase difference of pi between the wave coming from internal and external reflection. Now we will continue with our discussions on the thin film interference, our next objective in today's class. Now, you know, thin film, there are two type of films we can think of. One is a plane parallel film, another is a OSF film. Wedge, you have seen the wedge, like say there are two surface making an angle in between. There are two surface making an angle in between. So they forming an angle. So, so here it is shown that there are like I have used color diagram on the green color say A, A dash is one plane and B, B dash is another plane and that two plane is can meet at a point then it looks like a wedge. Okay, so let we have a film like that. So we will be discussing first the wedge film and that is general one and from here we can get the theory for thin film interference like plane parallel film interference very easily by making wedge angle zero. So uh, we'll discuss uh, thin film interference with the reference to the OSF film. So let us consider a thin OSF film, definitely of wedge angle alpha, not very large wedge angle, basically small wedge angle. This is an application in industry. We'll discuss later on in optical industry and in, in mechanical uh, industry also. There are some applications where optical components are used. So. Uh, let me first discuss the theory and then we'll go to the application of this phenomenon in our uh, in, in technological part. So let us consider the thin OSF film of wedge angle alpha as shown in the figure and let it illuminated with a monochromatic light having wavelength lambda. Okay. Any problem? Any question? Anyone? Hello. Seems that somebody's mic and there is a problem coming, so please mute your mic. You're not talking, please mute. Who are you? Hello. Udittan, will you please mute your mic? Udittan Devnath, please mute your mic. So uh, let us consider a OSA film that we are discussing and let a near monochromatic light wavelength lambda incident and you are seeing the film in reflected light. So there are two situations here. You can see the film from the reflected light or from the reflected light side. Let us discuss the situations that we are seeing as if the film on a reflected light. So on seeing the film, the reflected light, two reflected waves. There are, you know, two reflected waves CR and FR dash can be found. Uh, I'm sorry, actually R is not visible, R is somewhere here. So there are two reflected light, the CR and FR dash is visible, can be found. Out of the two, the CR is directly reflected. R is here. The CR is directly reflected. The CR is directly reflected and uh, FR dash is internally reflected because it has passed through the inside the film and then it has come back. So this is internally reflected. Now, 
this two ray, you see how FR dash has been produced. First, BC is incident in angle I, and then it is refracted in angle theta. Then it has incident on the second surface, BB dash, and then it has been reflected at the point E, and then it is uh, EF, that is reflected light, and this reflected light is further reflected from the interface A, from the surface A dash, and then we got FR dash, okay? Now, this two light ray has been originated from the same light ray. So, definitely they are coherent. So, fundamental condition is satisfied. But here, the amplitude of the light which is reflected, that is CR and FR dash, are different. As you can see that when the, if the light, light in, uh, you know, amplitude of the incident light is A, then this will be A into R. And this amplitude of this light ray will be different from AR because it has reflected, further reflected, and further reflected. So amplitude of these two light rays are different, but they are coming from the same source, so they satisfy the condition of coherence. So it is the division of amplitude class of the interference. Now, if we combine these rays in a lens, then at the focal point of the lens, like at the point M dash, they will superpose and they will produce interference pattern. Okay. Now we try to analyze this. We will try to analyze this and then what will be the you know, phase difference between these two light rays that we need to calculate to understand what will be the you know interference pattern it will be drug band or bright band or whatever so we need to calculate the phase difference between the ray cr and fr dash so that we'll be doing in the next slide now so we need to calculate the optical path difference between the ray cr and fr dash in reaching uh, the arc FD from C. So, so what we have done, we have drawn a normal FD from F to CR. Now, we may assume that these two rays travel long distance after FD. So, the distance traveled by the FR and you know, CR after FD can be assumed to be nearly same. So what is the path difference exist before reaching FD? That will be the path difference between these two rays because we have both of the rays are incident on the lens and they focus at the focal point of the lens. So it can be assumed nearly the path which will be traveled by these two rays will be the same after FD. So we have to calculate the path difference between these two rays before FD because this ray has incident here and then travel distance CD. Whereas FR dash has traveled a distance CE plus EF. So there is a path difference that is CD in AR minus you know, CE plus EF within the medium. Let the mu is reflective index of the medium of the film. Then the optical path difference will be mu into C plus EF minus CD. So that is the case that is written here. That is path difference delta is mu into C plus EF minus CD. So this we have to calculate. Now for that, let us uh, take uh, this triangle like CNF. What is N? We have drawn a normal FN from F to C. Yeah. Again, somebody's mic is on. Arsh Bhardhan, your mic is on. Are you saying something? Got it, sir. Yeah, please mute it. Yeah, so we drawn a normal FN from F to the ray CE. We draw a normal FN from uh, FN from F to CE. So we got a triangle CNF. We got a triangle CNF. So in this triangle, if you take the angle sine CFN, sine CFN, sine of CFN, then this is equal to CN by CF, isn't it? Sine CFN is sine CFN is CN divided by CF. Now, so CN is equal to CF sine CFN and CFN is theta. Do you understand why? CFN is theta because this angle is theta. This angle is theta and we have drawn a normal F, FN from F to C. So if this angle is theta, then it can be shown that very easily that CFN also will be theta because this angle is 90 degree. 
this angle is 90 degree and this is 90 minus theta. So this has to be theta so that the total is 180 degree. So and this is also a normal. This is also a normal to the surface A dash. So this dashed line is normal to the surface A dash. Then only this angle will be theta. Then only this angle will be theta. This is angle of refraction. This is a refracted ray C. OK, so this angle is theta. Therefore, CFN also will be theta. So we got CN is equal to CF sine theta. CN is equal to CF sine theta. Let us take another triangle CDF then sine CFD. Let me show you this figure CDF. CDF this triangle. This triangle this angle is 90 minus I and this is a 90 because we have drawn a normal FD from F to CR. So this has to be 90 degree and this is 90 minus I as this is I and this is I. So this will be 90 minus I then this must be I. So sin CFD is, you know, sin CFD is CD by CF, CD by CF. So sin I is CD by CF. So if we divide these two, sin theta is CN by CF and sin I CD by CF, then we got mu into sin I by sin theta is mu, that is the refractive index of the medium of this film and that is you know mu into cn is cd so we got cd is equal to mu into cn so we'll use this equation later on now c is equal to cn plus ne plus ef c is equal to cn plus ne plus ef that's what we've written then you become mu cn plus mu into ne plus ef mu into ne plus ef minus cd now CD is equal to mu CN, so this term cancel out. So ultimately you have mu into any plus EF. Mu into any plus EF. Now let us consider the triangle EFG. EFG is equal to EGF. Let's see here. Consider the triangle EFG. So here we have drawn a normal FG from F to the second surface BB dash. We have drawn a normal FG from F to the second surface BB dash. Then we are discussing about this triangle EFG. This triangle. We are discussing about this triangle. Now try to understand that why this angle must be theta plus alpha or this angle must be theta plus alpha. Now from E, we can draw a normal, say EH. We have drawn a normal EH to the surface BB dash. And this is a normal to the surface A dash. Now the angle between these two surfaces is alpha. So you can understand that the angle between the normal between these two surfaces also will be alpha. Is it okay? Because this ray that CH is the normal to A dash and EH is the normal to BB dash. Now angle between a dash and BB dash is alpha, so angle between CH and EH must be alpha. So this angle is alpha and this is theta. So if you consider the triangle CEH, if you consider the triangle CEH, then this is an external angle. This is an external angle of this triangle. Now external angle is sum of the two opposite internal angles, so this must be theta plus alpha. So we understand that this angle is theta plus alpha. Now this is a ray which is normal to BB dash. This is also a line which is normal to BB dash. So these two are parallel line. Now a line connecting between two parallel line. So this is theta plus alpha. Naturally this angle also will be theta plus alpha because this is a re reflected ray. So as if CN has incident an angle theta plus alpha and EF is reflected from this surface. So the angle of reflection will be equal to the angle of incidence. So this is also theta plus alpha. Now if this is theta plus alpha, we can understand these two parallel line and then this must be theta plus alpha. OK, so this is theta plus alpha. Similarly, with similar logic, we can understand that this also will be theta plus alpha. Because again, uh, these two are parallel line and this is a connecting line between the two. And this angle is theta plus alpha, so this angle is theta plus alpha. This is opposite angle. 
So this must be theta plus alpha. So in the triangle EFG, basically this become an isosceles triangle and there some must be two sides equal. That is EF must be equal to EG. EF must be equal to EG. So our path difference was Ne plus EF. Now it become Ne plus EG. So this path difference become mu into NG. Path difference become mu into NG. Okay. Now if we take the triangle FNG, if we try take the triangle FNG, and then if we take the cos of, you know, NGF, cos NGF, cos NGF will be NG divided by FG. NG divided by FG. NG divided by FG. So NG is equal to FG cos theta plus alpha. NG is equal to FG cos theta plus alpha. Now if the thickness of the film here is E, then this will be twice E, FG will be twice E. Let the thickness of the film at this point at which you have kept your eye is small E, then this become twice E cos theta plus alpha. So ultimately our path difference become delta is equal to 2 mu e cos theta plus alpha. Our path difference become 2 mu e cos theta plus alpha. So the path difference between the two rays, the optical path difference between the two rays, CR and FR dash has become 2 mu e cos theta plus alpha. Now till now, is there any question? All steps are written in every detail. So you can go through it even later. So, but anyway, if you have any questions, it may be clear now. <coughs> Since, sir, the thickness yeah. of film is, sir, thickness of film is changing. So, which thickness we consider for our E? Yeah, like because in this, this case, land. you know, we have drawn the diagram. It looks like very extended. So, you, it seems to you that the thickness of the film is changing. But, you know, when in optical situations, these uh, for a, if, if you move your eye, thickness will definitely vary. That's the interesting point here. You have rightly uh, understood that the thickness of the film is varying. But say I kept my eye at a particular location of the film. So there is a particular thickness. Okay. Now if I move my eye, the thickness of the film will vary. That's the interesting point that we are going to discuss later. Okay. So that uh, why uh, or what will happen like if I move my eye. Okay. So at a particular location, when you're seeing at a particular location, then thickness of the film can be nearly assumed to be constant to a particular value. But yes, you are right. As you move away your eye, then your, the thickness of the film will vary. Okay? So for a particular point of the film, the thickness of the film is E can be taken. Fine. So what is the phase change then? Del delta is the path difference and there is a phase change. We know that that because of, you know, uh, there are two light ray. One is the, uh, the CR. CR is reflected uh, back by a particular medium and FR dash has been produced due to reflection at E, which is backed by certain medium. Now you see, the CR is backed by a medium, which is denser. If you assume the outside medium is rarer, then the medium, uh, the reflective index of the film of the medium, of the wave film, then we understand that very easily that the CR will suffer a abrupt phase change of pi due to reflection backed by the denser medium. So the phase difference between CR and FR dash, but in case of the FR dash, it has been reflected here. So backed by the rarer medium, so there is no chance for phase change. So the only this ray will suffer a phase shift of pi with respect to the incident light. So the total phase difference now between CR and FR dash will be 2 pi by lambda into delta. Now who is taking control of the presentation? Don't try to do all this. Please don't do all this. Someone is creating problem. What is the need of doing all this nonsense activity?
If you want to test your computer knowledge, you will have a chance to do that. OK, wait for some time. Then you will apply your, all the skill. Don't try to create any disturbance for us. I don't like all this indiscipline attitude. Try to listen what we are discussing and don't try to apply your knowledge here. If you have some interest on the topic, you can ask. Don't create unnecessary problem. And if you are found, you will be severely punished. Anyway, so that, uh, you know, we got uh, the following thing, the equation 21, that the phase difference between the ray, CR, and F are dash, that is delta, that is 2 pi by lambda into delta plus pi. Now, so the condition of interference, you know, we know that if the phase difference is even multiple of pi, then constructive interference. But in this case, it will be uh, the reverse because there is additional phase shift of pi. So when twice mu cos theta plus alpha, that condition remains same. The phase difference is even multiple of pi that give the constructive interference. I'm sorry, I let me revise. The phase difference is even multiple of pi will be constructive interference and bright fringe. But this path difference will be odd because now additional phase pi. So that will be the reverse. So the path difference that is 2 mu e, uh, 2 mu e cos theta plus alpha is odd multiple of lambda by 2. That gives you the bright fringe. And if 2 mu e cos theta plus alpha is even multiple of lambda by 2, then you have a dark fringe. Now you see that if you look to, our, to the film at a particular locations, then your angle of incidence is fixed. So angle of reflection also is also fixed. And the wedge angle is fixed. If you are using a one wedge angle, one wedge, then alpha is fixed. So this parameter is fixed. So only variable parameter is the thickness of the film. The thickness of the film, as you, as one of our student rightly mentioned, that if we move our eye, then the thickness of the film is very. As you, if you see the diagram, like if you move your eye from this location, where the two surfaces intersect, there the thickness is zero. Where the two surfaces meet each other, there the wedge angle is, or the thickness of the film is zero. And as you move away your eye, then the thickness become continually increasing. So, what type of uh, fringe you will see? So, therefore, on incidence of a plane parallel beam of light on the front surface of the film, I and theta remains constant. The path difference will vary due to the variation of E along the length of the film. That's what I have already discussed. Now let us see what will be the type of the film at the edge of the wedge, type of the fringe at the edge of the wedge. At the edge of the wedge, the thickness is zero. So what type of fringe you will expect? The thickness is zero. So which condition will satisfy? Condition 22A or 22B? Yeah, Om is saying something. A or B will satisfy. Anyone please? Could you repeat the question again? The question is that at the edge of the wedge, the thickness of the film is zero because both the surface meet each other. Then what will be the type of the fringe at the edge of the wedge? The dark. It's 22A. 22B. Yeah, very good. 22B. 22B will be satisfied. You are right. 22B will be satisfied. So we'll get a dark fringe. We'll get dark fringe at the edge of the wedge. So now as you move away from the edge, you're, you get some positive value in the left hand side. You get some positive value in the left hand side. So the next condition will be the bright. Next condition is see, first is zero and then you have a lambda by two. If the path difference as soon as it become lambda by two, then to satisfy the first order, um, you know, bright fringe. And then 
when it will again become 3 lambda by 2, then it will be again bright, when 5 lambda by 2, it will be bright, and so on. So, and in between, there will be dark fringe. So, at the edge of the wedge, you'll have a dark fringe, and at the distance from the edge such that, at a distance from the edge such that, when delta become lambda by 2, 3 lambda by 2, 5 lambda by 2, the film will appear bright. On the other hand, when delta become lambda, 2 lambda, 3 lambda, that is in between, in between, you will have when lambda, 2 lambda, 3 lambda are satisfied, the film will appear dark. So, hence, as we proceed along the film, along the direction of increasing thickness, we shall see alternatively dark and bright band and parallel to the edge of the film. That will be parallel to the edge of the film. That we will discuss the later in the later diagram that why it will be parallel to the edge of the film. Because parallel to the edge of the film, thickness will remain constant for a particular you know, plane, thickness will remain constant. So, you will get, you know, band. So, that, yeah, it is discussing, we'll discuss later on. Now, let me uh, spend, but our time is almost end, nearing. But let us discuss this very quickly, uh, that the application of this experiment, the plainness of a surface can be measured you know, whether a surface is plain or there is some scratch on the surface, that can be measured by doing this experiment. For that, you have to take one plain surface and another surface, which is, say, I have some curve like this. So, it's not a plain surface. For example, there is some curvature. Then what will happen? That the thickness uh, will increase, decrease, and that will happen around a particular location. So, there will be curvature, so the fringe what we will see also will not be straight fringe. Fringe also will be curved. Because here the fringe are fringe of cost and thickness. For a given value of P, you get a, par a particular order. Particular order of the fringe depends on a constant value of P. So, the fringe will be the fringe of cost and thickness. Here the fringe are fringe of cost and thickness. So, your you know, if the surface is curved, then fringe also will be curved. So, the plainness of the surface can be measured as a deviation from the perfect plainness of the surface will immediately be obvious through the curvature of this band, as any one band is the locus of cost and thickness of the film. That is why these fringes are called fringe of cost and thickness, like the fringe which is formed in Royce film experiments are called fringe of cost and thickness. And you can calculate the fringe width, that is separation between two conjugative fringe. For example, here we have a dark band and the next dark band comes here or the thickness E satisfied this condition. That is, you know, the thickness E satisfied the condition twice mu cos theta plus alpha is lambda. That is the first order dark band condition. And if this is alpha, then we know that if you take 10 alpha will be E by X bar. Let the distance between the two dark band is X bar. That is the fringe width. So, E is equal to X bar 10 alpha and we know twice mu cos theta plus alpha must be lambda. We combine these two, then you get equation that X bar is lambda by 2 mu 10 alpha cos theta plus alpha. Okay, or X bar is equal to lambda by 2 10 alpha and then root over mu square minus sine square i. Because mu cos theta plus alpha can be, you know, written as nearly mu cos theta if we take the wedge angle is very small then this is nearly written as cos theta and cos theta, mu cos theta is, you know, uh, you know, sine i by sine theta is mu. So, if you apply that, then it's become root over of mu square minus sine square i. So, because cos theta is uh, 1 minus sine square theta and if you multiply the mu, so mu square minus mu square sine square theta, mu sine theta is sine i. So, it's become root over mu square minus sine square i. So, depending upon the value of i and alpha and mu, the separation between the fringe will vary in OSF film experiments. So today we'll stop here because we don't have the time. If we just discuss, uh, just uh, you know, analyze these equations, then you can get this. The smaller is the wedge angle, larger will be the, and greater is the angle of incidence, greater will be the size of X bar. Also the separation X bar is greater, the smaller is the reflective index, mu of the film, and greater is the wavelength. So, if OSF film is illuminated successively with light of different color, then what will happen? Like if the light from the sun is incident, then other things being equal, since lambda red is greater than lambda violet, so the spacing of the fringe is greater with the red light and least with the violet light and intermediate for intermediate wavelength. So, you will get a color band 
uh, you can see the color band. If a if white light incident on such a film, and if you see on the reflected light side, you will find color bands because different colors will form, you know, the fringe of the different order at different locations. So, uh, and the separations will be different. So you can have a color band, but if the thickness of the film is large, so then those bands might overlap and you might not get perfect, uh, you know, um, you might not get color band because those light rays might get overlap. But in case of the monochromatic light, if you incident near monochromatic light is incident, then you'll get dark bright bands can easily observe. So I'll discuss elaborately again in the next class uh, the application of these phenomenon further um, leading to some industrial applications that we'll discuss in the next class because today we don't have much time. Yeah, that's not possible more than this. So in brief, what we have discussed today, that is we have first discussed the Stokes statement and then you know we derive the condition for interference in OSF film experiments with OSF angle alpha and reflective index mu of the film. And, and then we try to understand that how this uh, the thickness, I mean that uh, the fringe width will vary how the fringe width will vary, uh, how the, we can have a wider fringe, how we can have a wider fringe.